Uh, so my name is Steve Steinway. Uh, I'm an MD-PhD candidate at Penn State University, and I'm actually currently a visiting graduate student at University of Virginia. Uh, so today I'll talk about my work um, focusing on a process in uh, solid tumor invasion called epithelial to mesenchymal transition and taking a dynamic network not modeling approach and a simultaneous uh, experimental analysis. So I'd like to first talk about what is uh, EMT. And so it is a, a developmental process that's actually hijacked by tumor cells to start the process of metastasis. Um, so normally, uh, well, so most solid tumors are carcinomas, and carcinomas are of epithelial origin. So epithelial cells tend to have very strong adhesive properties. They tend to be cuboidal, and they tend to have this apical basal polarity. And um, as carcinomas pr uh, progress, they actually lose this phenotype. They lose their adhesiveness and their uh, cuboidal appearance and become mesenchymal and elongated. And this is the, one of the initiating uh, steps in metastasis that allows cancer cells to, to start migrating out of the, the, uh, the tumor. And so, and interestingly enough, actually uh, more experimental papers as of late have been talking about a hybrid or partial EMT phenotypes that are somewhere between this epithelial and this mesenchymal state. And they're actually stable, they're not, they're not uh, don't seem to be uh, transient uh, uh, cellular states. Uh, so the epithelial phenotype is uh, characterized by uh, high E cadherin expression, which is a, a considered, uh, it's a cell adhesion protein, and it's also considered the hallmark of the phenotype, and you lose this uh, as you undergo EMT. And so, as I said, uh, when cells become uh, more mesenchymal, they, they can get into the bloodstream and start this process of metastasis. And metastasis is really what makes solid tumors really bad. Uh, if cells didn't uh, invade and metastasize, solid tumors would be a surgical issue, and um, you wouldn't really have much death from them. So turns out uh, EMT is a very complex process, and it's extremely well studied uh, in the experimental literature. There are many growth factors and signals that can induce this process. These growth factors act on signal transduction pathways. Uh, and these signal transduction pathways lead to uh, transcriptional uh, network uh, changes uh, that regulate E cadherin and other, other uh, factors uh, driving this EMT process. So the goal of my work has been to integrate uh, all uh, the known information about EMT to understand and model EMT dynamics uh, mostly focusing on TGF-beta as a signal because my uh, experimental lab is interested in uh, hepatocellular carcinoma or liver, liver cancer where TGF-beta is very commonly dysregulated. And uh, secondly, we're interested in ways to disrupt this process with the hopes of suppressing uh, invasion and metastasis. So I uh, constructed this uh, topological network from the literature. Uh, and uh, basically representing uh, as all of what I think is known about EMT. And then, so that's a topological or a static framework, but, but we're interested in, in how uh, this, in, in studying this process over time. Uh, so we need to actually translate the, this static network into some kind of dynamic context. And there's different uh, ways to model dynamics. Because of the, the size of the network that we're dealing with, uh, with EMT, and because of the, the lack of, of kinetic information that we know about for most nodes in the network, we chose to, to use a, a discrete modeling framework, uh, more specifically a Boolean or logical modeling framework. And so in Boolean or logical models, nodes can have two states. They can either be on or above some threshold for activity, or they can be off or below some threshold for activity. And in this hypothetical uh, network, uh, the regulation of node C uh, is due to A, B, and, and, and D. And, and so this is the logical fun function that's regulating node C. 
So we constructed rules as best we could based on the known logic and outcomes we expected to see in these signaling pathways. And when uh, our model, and when we did simulations by, by turning on TGF beta and looking at the downstream effect on, on other nodes in our network, when uh, these rules produced effects that we uh, didn't expect to see based on, on what's known about EMT, we went back, looked at the rules and the logic, and ad adjusted them as best we could to, to recapitulate what's known about EMT and the other nodes all the, and signaling pathways in our network. And so we, we did this kind of iterative process for a while until, until we came up with something that we thought qualitatively represented uh, what's known about EMT signaling. Uh, something we noticed as we constructed this network because we, uh, was that uh, pathways that, that weren't previously thought to be in, uh, connected to TGF beta signaling uh, seemed to be induced by turning on TGF beta in the context of this EMT network. We saw actually a sonic hedgehog and wind signaling induction. Um, and, and we think uh, that these weren't necessarily previously seen because no one's actually looked at EMT from such a, uh, a systems level context. So I next went into the lab and, and tried to see whether these actually uh, existed in the context of, uh, of liver cancer and EMT. So I used uh, some uh, mouse and human cell lines that we had uh, and treated them with, uh, so uh, we had some epithelial and some mesenchymal cell lines. And some epithelial cell lines we treated with TGF beta and we saw induction of, uh, of markers uh, of sonic hedgehog and wind signaling pathways, um, both by uh, mRNA expression and protein level, uh, and at the protein level. Additionally, we had uh, some banked uh, liver cancer or hepatocellular carcinoma patient samples, and we saw that uh, TGF beta activity, uh, which is a marker of TGF beta activity is phosphorylation of SMAT3, was actually correlated with uh, markers of sonic hedgehog signaling. So the next thing we were curious about were, were you know, what are the, all the possible steady states that, are, that our model could, could reach uh, when you treat an epithelial cell with TGF beta. And what we saw was that when, when TGF beta is the only dysregulation, uh, a single steady state is possible through, through many trajectories. And the reason we have so many, we can have so many trajectories is because we use an asynchronous updating scheme. Um, and, but the most, so the most common uh, trajectory is, is in red here. And uh, looking at, at the five most common trajectories from the epithelial steady state to, to the mesenchymal steady state, uh, we see that they share a lot uh, uh, of similar uh, paths through our uh, network. So another thing we looked at in the context of TGF beta signaling in our EMT model is something called network motifs. And this is based on uh, an algorithm developed by Jorge Zanuto, who's another graduate student in, in, uh, with me in, in Rekha Albert's group. And so, so, uh, so a network or a stable network motif is uh, defined as a strongly, component, uh, strongly connected component in a network where all the uh, states of all the nodes in the, in the strongly connected component are steady states of this strongly connected component. And, um, and so, so what this means basically, so this has two different interpretations. Topologically, these represent positive feedback loops with, which are required for, for bi-stability in networks. And dynamically, what this means is that um, is that basically it's a, it's a point of no return. It's a point where, uh, in, in uh, the signaling context where a cellular decision uh, has been made and, and cannot be uh, reversed under normal cellular context without uh, extreme perturbations to the network. So, um, so we saw these interesting uh, uh, feedback loops and what was it? another interesting thing about them was uh, we saw a crosstalk uh, related to, partially related to, to what we saw previously uh, uh, with the experimental work I showed a few slides ago. 
but we were next curious about, uh, about perturbations to the model because our goal is to try to suppress this process. So we started screening perturbations in silico and saw that uh, with single perturbations, we didn't really have much success. Um, for example, focusing on, on uh, SMAD node, which is a downstream, a canonical downstream target of TGF beta signaling, we actually lose two of our stable motifs, uh, but we only get about a 1% reduction of EMT in silico. That's because we still, uh, actually, there are other stable motifs that can still drive the EMT signal because they're not disrupted by SMAD, uh, uh, knocking out SMAD in our model. And we saw a lot of, a lot of things like this. So then if we, if we can't you know, knock out single nodes, the next thing we try was to knock out things in combination. And that is where we started to get some interesting results. So we did basically a, a, a knockout screen uh, where basically each node on the y-axis was knocked out in combination with each node on the x-axis, and then cells were treated uh, in silico with TGF beta, and we saw a um, subset of combinations actually disrupted EMT. And so these combinations are actually testable predictions that we can test out in the lab and see what they actually do whether they do in, in indeed suppress uh, this process. So here are um, here's some uh, immunofluorescent staining of some uh, spectrum of cell lines that I have, and uh, basically showing the, the E to M spectrum, looking at E cadherin as a marker of epithelial uh, phenotype and bimentin as a marker of uh, mesenchymal phenotype. And we could see on the left, these HU7 uh, cells have a lot of E-cadherid expression, very little bimentin expression. And you could also see their cuboidal phenotype. And if we look all the way on the right, these, this HLF cell line has a ton of bimentin, absolutely no E-cadherin. And actually, you could almost see their, their, their spindle-like elongated phenotype from this image. So before we actually got to our, our, our small uh, Knock, uh, knockdown, sRNA knockdown screen. We uh, did a little further characterization of, of, our, of our model. So we actually looked at, at our nodes of interest and looked at their expression in, in epithelial versus mesenchymal cells. And by mRNA expression, we saw that most of the nodes that were interested in knocking down are in fact enriched in our mesenchymal phenotype cells uh, relative to our epithelial cells. We also saw that by, by protein expression. Uh, and when we treated our epithelial, most epithelial HU7 cells with TGF beta, we actually get induction of uh, the nodes we're interested in knocking down, which we thought was interesting. So uh, next, I did this combination uh, SARD screen. Uh, it's a small screen. <laughs> uh, so what we did was we basically took epithelial cells and did sRNA knockdowns in combination, uh, waited some period of time, then added TGF beta, then uh, measured EMT markers by protein and mRNA expression. And secondly, uh, we actually looked at, at migration, which is a, a, a functional readout of EMT. Uh, cells that are undergoing EMT actually are more migratory. I will say that I, I screwed up this part of the assay, but it's something I'm going to repeat in the near future. Um, but so in terms of uh, protein marker expression, I, we did, uh, I did quantitative, uh, quantitative uh, Western blotting and saw that many of my combinations, uh, sRNA knockdowns, actually produced the, the EMT suppression signature. So they had high EK adherin. That, that uh, green uh, on, on the fluorescent image, and actually very low vimentin expression, suggesting that a lot of them did suppress uh, the induction of EMT. Secondly, I, I, I constructed a simple um, metric of epithelialness, uh, which is, is based on, on the expression of uh, vimented in, in uh, the combinations versus the controls and e-cadherin and the combinations versus the controls. And so cells with a high epithelialness 
are more epithelial and they're not undergoing EMT. And we see uh, relative to our, our scrambled siRNA control, just about all of our combinations seem to suppress EMT. And I, I plan to actually uh, improve on this, this metric once we have the migration data. I think we can look at the relative contribution of eCadherin versus Vimentin expression and scale this metric accordingly. Um, so as I mentioned previously, a lot of experimentalists have seen uh, so-called EMT hybrid steady states or, or, or partial EMT states. And so initially, we were just characterizing uh, epithelial versus mesenchymal or EMT versus no EMT by ecadherin expression. But what we noticed was that ecadherin was that when we started perturbing nodes uh, in combination, uh, that, that a lot more nodes in the network started to change. So we wanted to, to um, kind of, uh, we thought that what we might be seeing is, is our, could be uh, potentially uh, hybrid EMT states. So, so what we did here, actually, so, so we, we tried to, to develop a, a quantitative representation of an EMT phenotype using uh, two different methods. So this first is actually we, we projected every steady state from the, from the perturbed uh, models onto the epithelial steady state and the mesenchymal steady state from our normal model or normal model treated with TGF beta. And so if a, if a cellular, uh, basically if a cell is, is completely epithelial, it would be one on the y-axis and zero on the x-axis and up here. If a cell is completely mesenchymal, it would be one on the x-axis and zero on the y-axis down here. And if it was somewhere in between, uh, you would expect them to be on the diagonal. And what we see is that actually a lot of these uh, perturbed uh, networks are actually fall in between uh, the epithelial and mesenchymal steady states, suggesting that they could potentially be uh, these EMT hybrid states. Looked at a different way, uh, we did a, actually a principal components analysis just to, we collected all of our steady states from our, our um, unperturbed networks and, and uh, a handful of the, the perturbed models and just, uh, yeah, just, just clustered them using principal components analysis. And you'll see over here are the epithelial, uh, possible epithelial steady states from our unperturbed network and here's the mesenchymal uh, normal steady state. And you'll notice that a lot of the perturbed steady states actually are intermediate by PCA uh, to these, these steady states. And so this is, is kind of another representation of, of that. So in conclusion, uh, our model recapitulates known EMT uh, dynamics and also predicts known, uh, novel pathway cross-activation, which we uh, looked at and, and verified experimentally. We were able to predict nodes, uh, no comp knockdown combinations that suppress the TGF beta driven EMT. And then uh, our wet lab experiments suggest that many combinations do suppress uh, EMT. And we also believe that uh, we, we uh, have evidence uh, for EMT hybrid steady states that appear in our, our network model that, that have been talked about quite a bit uh, in the lab. And I'd just like to thank my experimental advisor, uh, Tom Lochran, uh, who I moved to the University of Virginia with, um, for his support, and also uh, my uh, systems uh, theoretical advisor, Rekha Albert, for all of her wonderful support, and also Jorge Zanudo for his uh, wonderful <laughs> motif analysis that he's helped me with. For uh, uh, one or two questions, I have one for you, Stephen. Uh, the uh, perturbations, the double treatments, you did um, simultaneously at the same time. Uh, did you play with the timing? Uh, not for the not for the knockouts, actually. Um, but we, actually, I did some. We looked at like overactive perturbations as well, and we saw one that was really actually we saw inter interesting example of context dependence, which may actually be wrong in our network, and I just didn't go into it because it would be too complicated to 
talk about in this short period. Uh, but I did in uh, that context, and you actually see effects when you do it earlier versus later in the models. Right, because in a way, you are swaying the network to go to a place where maybe more, more vulnerable for another perturbation, right? Sure, so, so. sure, exactly. And, and there's been a, a lot uh, experimental and, and theoretically about, about network rewiring at different time points and treating sure. with different drugs at different time points. Exactly. If no more questions, let's thank uh, Stephen one more time.